dealer and this is your room so definitely i don't want to take over so. no yeah no you're way better people than i am talking i get nervous quick uh our unique home audio started it in february of 2020 right when COVID hit so it was a little bit slow of a build prior to that i owned a company in mission called pure audio that's how i started um, got pretty fortunate getting hired on audio at uh, 17 years old. My friend's dad was a vice president of Ford, very wealthy. I was able to buy his stuff for dirt cheap or mow his lawn. So my first preamp was an audio rooster SP9, threshold SA4 amplifier, and Sonos software speakers at 17, which got me into this and sold, bought, sold, bought. So I was able to build a company in Michigan. Once we moved to Florida, I shut that company down, got kind of out of high-end audio, got to a worse hobby was boating, which was just as expensive or more. Then once we got our house mortgage in the boat, and my wife, uh, we came to the Tampa show in 2019, and we were walking around. People still kind of remembered me when I went pure audio. I was kind of surprised. And she said I was a kid in the candy store, just start something up. So that's when I started Unique Home Audio. Kind of call it Unique Home Audio for a specific reason. We are very dedicated one-on-one. -on -one. I don't care if you buy a cable from me, you want me to hook it up, we'll hook the cable up. So that's kind of a little bit of history about the company. And Dutch and Dutch is a speaker that you were carrying before you even had the box, is that correct? That's correct. Right. And that's an active speaker at what, 15,000? 15,000. And it's designed to be put where it is. Um, we tried it out further in the room, did measurements. It's designed to be where it is. Active speaker, very full range, as you'll hear. I don't have to tell you about it. You're going to hear that soon. Uh, and those are chorus stands there, right? Yes. Which are my favorite stands for bookshelves. Really cool. Uh, and what other equipment we have here? Bach basically is your DAC, yeah. preamp, and everything. I just have a Hi Fi Rose, just the new streamer. So I'm a dealer for Hi Fi Rose. And then on the bottom is just a phono stage for the turntable, which is a Koda. And then most people wonder, how does the Bach hook up? Whether you get the Bach from Mac, Audio, Dio. Dio is the version of this without the DAC, so if you're married to your DAC. Um, but what Edgar normally says is, he will send you this even if you think your DAC is the best. He'll say, send you this one, you can send it back, and it will convert it back to the Dio and give you $5,000 difference, the only difference of price. But he's convinced that this DAC in here, for him to make a DAC is nothing. For them, for DAC makers like DCS, MSB, as great as they are, they can't do what he does. So he doesn't really tout his DAC as part of the deal, but he's comfortable this DAC will compete with anything. And I will just say, everybody I've sold this to, he's, I've never sold a DO, I've sold it with the DAC, nobody's ever sent it back. But if for whatever reason, you go R2R our guy, whatever you like, you can use your own DAC. And this usually fits right before your DAC. So whatever your system is. Um, we're going to do a calibration real quick for yep. somebody and maybe we can walk through. Not yeah, another one. Uh, let's do one and then we'll do the drawing right after that. Okay. So crosstalk cancellation basically is what corrupts. If you go to every room here, most all of your imaging is going to be between two speakers. The reason being is crosstalk. No matter how good your speakers are, $250,000 speaker, Gardner Acoustics in one of these rooms, beautiful speakers, sounds great. But still, most of the presentation is in between the two speakers. The reason being, you're hearing in your left ear with the right speaker and vice versa, and that corrupts all the spatial cues. There's nothing that this is fabricating. This is just removing what's corrupting. This is your right so some recordings will have a huge delta in terms of spatial cues way over here, all over. This is depth. Some won't have any, uh, or very little. Mono material is totally ignored by the box. So, and we can even prove it to people that say, oh, it's a gimmick or it's making up stuff. Well, one thing we can do, um, we probably don't have time to do that here, but we can turn this, it's part of the box, so you can do this in your home. You can turn this into a recording studio. Your ears are basically the mics now. Those are mics are part of the cost, why this is even as expensive, relatively not expensive, but those are, Marvels of engineering to have 20 to 40,000 K range on mics in your ear. The mic is this small. That's what Edgar spent a lot of time perfecting because this is what it all boils down to what goes in your ear, not what's on a free form mic. And you will see how much your head and your ear pinna when you own this make a difference because 
more people that come in your room and sit in there, same gear, same room, everything, everybody has different measurements of frequency response. But yet, if you did an REW, no matter who came in, you know, it's always gonna be the same. We have a fingerprint to our head and our ears. And that's why many years we wonder why it sounds bright. Well, our ear pinnet is designed to accentuate certain frequencies for danger in the wild it's from evolution. And we're used to it, so you don't want to correct for most of it. But when a piano is playing in an orchestra, it's usually playing from one source in a range, and it's hitting our ear penna naturally, like we're used to. It's not getting shouted at us from two spots right at our ears. So what Edgar has done with the ORC, which is coming out, is, and that's part of the box if you order by next month, you will get correction for your ear penna. Um, and the exaggeration, why we always think our systems sometimes sound at least bright, or we have to correct it with Harman curves, you know, tubes, distortion generators, all these other things we use to make it warmer. It's really because of your head and your ear pinna. He's actually found the science to address it properly versus these other primitive ways we've been doing all these years. So ORC is coming down, but let's start with the Bach and get it calibrated. It literally takes no time. It does do head tracking, so if you see a camera down here, he's very meticulous about any movement, and this will track you, literally an inch you move your head. But you don't have to run head tracking if you don't want. Um, and today we're just gonna do no, no head tracking to, for efficiency purposes. Ready? Okay, we keep so we gotta quiet. keep it quiet for two quick frequency sweeps. Please place head in listening position. Bach measurements done. Thank you. So the only difference if you're doing head tracking is it will do it two more times. You will lean as far as you want it to, get to track you in your chair for movement, and you'll do zoop, zoop, and then you'll lean to the other side, zoop, zoop, and then you're done. So basically two more times of that, and you're calibrated, and you never have to wear the mics again. Some people think you have to wear the mics while listening to Bach. No, it's just for that purpose. So the person in that seat is gonna get the best calibration. People off axis, this is gonna sound like a normal speaker off axis. Um, the person right behind him, the closer you are to his head, you can get probably 80 to 85% of the, if you're on that direct line. You'll need to move up at least another foot or so though. Yeah, don't be afraid. Make friends, you'll be good. This only operates for digital though, so analog, it doesn't yeah. work, right? Oh, yes, analog, work. yes, yes oh, sir. I, I use open reel huh? and, and turntable.
like 30 seconds just in the time. It's like you, if you were immersed. Immersive is what the, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And again, um, what I'm going to play now is it, it ignores mono material, which mostly vocals are mono as well as bass under 100 hertz. And so, but you still get some benefits to the Bach because it increases, it improves the timing to your ear. Now you can get, Van der Steen has talked about time alignment. Well, that's only for one frequency, and if nothing in your room is corrupting it. This is getting timing to your ears exactly from all your drivers. And the ORC is gonna enhance that even more. But even on mono material, you will know pinpoint imaging much more refined. And I'm gonna play a female vocal track where you should be able to point to where she is. And she might even be in, uh, in front of the plane of the speakers. Our bodies are hurting like hell. Feel like you can touch her, huh? Oh. Okay, come on, let's. They promise to never leave us alone. And what I want people that aren't in that sweet spot, it doesn't sound, uh, uh, you can tell me, if it sounds any so different than any like... other speaker where you're off axis, we're not tonally changing anything. No. It's nothing is tonally getting distorted like you would get with surround sound process modes where they force spatial cues and ambience and all that stuff. Again, this is only taking away. It doesn't add anything. It's just taking away what your ear got measured to hearing what this speaker is doing and vice versa. Uh, but in the effort of time, we don't want we want to kind of circle people in and out. So uh, I think you got a good flavor mm -hmm. thing. And what I'll do is I'm gonna go grab a drink and then we'll do the. Um, you can cal calibrate the next person yes. and then we'll do a drawing. Okay. Next victim. Yeah. Yeah, the ear is just doing positioning for the microphone right now. But how is my head so much different than someone else's head? It's just size, figure smaller. Well, you sit. It's mainly the ear itself, the shape of the ear, the pina, and everything. Everyone is, is different. Okay. What about hearing loss? If you have some, I mean, whatever it is. Here, here, I guess, but is that so? That's a good question. Hearing yeah. this will only calibrate what goes into your ear. Now, ironically, if you watch my videos with Denon from Toronto, they Massimo owns them, which also is a medical equipment technology company. And people are wondering why would Massimo buy Denon? Well, they actually utilize the technology that they use to measure the hearing in toddlers because toddlers can't say, babies can't say if they're deaf or not, they have to, they can't verbalize. So they have technology you put in your ear and it measures how your ear follicles, somehow it measures this, respond to different test tones. Well, what they did is they put that technology in Denon earbuds. And I bought these earbuds because it was so impressive. 
um, in Toronto, I did the demo and Pete the Great did it as well. And it measures what frequencies you're more or less sensitive to. And it could be hearing loss or you could have just been born with sensitivities. Um, in fact, one elderly gentleman had one of the cleanest ones and young people had different. So it all depends, but each one of us has different hearing. So in the future, actually Edgar worked with the Massimo, they, they licensed some stuff with him. And uh, they might go to that next level, <laughs> but right now just getting the ear pinna head effect um, and ORC is gonna be next level. As, as good as you're hearing this, when you hear ORC adjust frequency wise, I did a little bit of EQ here to get this room as much as we can. You will not believe what ORC can do. In fact, Fernando, who has the most experience, even more than me, with all DSP, uh, Audio Lens, Accurate, Direct, all of those, he just texted me today. He just got the beta version. He's like, he's blown away. So that's to come. And you're going to get it free if you order the box from Mac before March 3rd. Uh, you get a thousand dollar discount. It's much more extensive programming on the audio. So just to keep that in mind. Uh, are you ready to do the right. test now? Okay, let's do quiet for a little bit. Please place head in listening position. So I'll show you a little bit of the screen so you can kind of know. Um, what this is doing is measuring left and right um, how much crosstalk cancellation at each frequency is required, left and right. And so he's got 11.48 on average dB and 7.7. .7. That's a lot, so you, you should get really good spatial cues. It doesn't matter if left and right is not equal because that's why it's doing both forms and it corrects according to each ear. And, and then tracks your head if you even engage that. Let's do um, let's do a fun track. Everybody on now. What are you looking at? very primitive room, your probably room, your maybe may get her right in your ear, but it's easy to AB what you're hearing. Um, I'm gonna play a track that every room here, because I want you to evaluate these speakers too. These are very high-end speakers, and actually the ATCs come with the Bach intro, which is not gonna have the calibration in the head and the mics, but they are such a believer in the technology, they license it from Edgar to include the intro version, which you can get for 900 bucks in their speakers. Uh, but we're using this version of it. But I just want you to play, play a regular song you're going to hear in every other room. Go ahead and request this in other rooms and see how it sounds. What's the name? Uh, this is 
just dire straits, you and your friend. instruments or go listen. This is a good track. It's fun. Out here in the fields I fought for my meals I get my back into my living I don't need to fight To prove I'm right And I don't need to be forgiven Don't cry Sally, take my hand. We'll travel south across the land. Put out the fire. Don't look past my shoulder. The exodus is here. The happy ones are near. Let's get together before we get much older. Teenage wasteland, teenage wasteland, they're all wasted. Teenage wasteland. So I play that track to show people not only the tonality of the speaker, but some tracks where you had stuff in your ear, like Madonna, that's not putting a standing bass in your ears, not fabricating it. It's putting it in space though, relative to the mic, so that you now hear what was in the recording. And one thing you can do to prove it to yourself, if you don't wanna do the, turn your room into a recording, you can put on YouTube videos that are binaurally mic'd, and you're watching the mic, and you're watching them play. And then you can see where the relative the standing bass is to the violin or whatever pieces are in there. And now close your eyes and you can point to the same spots that you're seeing in the video to prove it to you. And there's tons of binaural recordings on YouTube. So whether you get the Bach for Mac and you can Chrome, you can cast this Apple Play uh, to your TV, you can play YouTube videos and now Netflix and uh, YouTube can now run through the Bach. So no need for surround sound processing anymore. Um, so let's go ahead and do the drawing and then we can circle somebody else in. That, when he was just singing that, he sounded huge. It reminded me of the big Clarissa speakers that are on the second and Yeah, and look at this speaker right. comparatively and price-wise. Yeah. yeah, these are very impressive speakers. It doesn't negate you having to have quality speakers. You still, I want people to own full range speakers or bookshelves with subs because you can't put 20 Hertz. But if you've got that, this plus ORC will give you better performance than some of these big speakers, or at least equal to what you're hearing. Do you need a preamp or kind of power? No, it, this is preamp, all this is right here. He has a very transparent gain stage. In fact, he's got three different gain tabs so that some people mismatch um, their speakers are super efficient one time and then they go from horns to something else and then they have to change the preamp because it's got too much gain. 
where he's got adjustable tabs in his game and they give you more volume control. Um, so very transparent. So you can drive an amp directly. Drive it directly. That's what basically the amp is in the speaker is driving it directly. Mm. Are there sub outs or do you do it at all? It has a crossover too. There is a crossover link with Riley. So you can either use it to actively cross over your speakers if you're a do it yourself. You don't want to you don't want to take out the parts, you can do that or use it to make a sub. Because I'm not a believer if you watch my videos and this high level bullshit, you know, like you gotta cross over these to make to your subs and vice versa, both ways, not one way. Um, and then you have that power with the box. It's part of the package. So um, who should we get to draw? Who's in a draw? Well you just pick something and yeah. It's fixed. Yeah. <laughs> well, we know it is if it's your name. <laughs> Dana. Oh my, it's me. Oh, <laughs> ah, yeah. Fix, redraw, redraw. <laughs> Where's your good fix? The goodies are back there, yeah. Cool. Well, now I don't feel bad kicking you out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, who's next? And um, I'm happy to take requests. Like I said, I'm not even playing the uh, tracks that are almost cheating, which are binaural track. When you get this, um, uh, he works very close with David Chesky. Uh, and he's on, Edgar, who made this, is actually on the credits for many of the binaural recordings of David Chesky. You can look on the back. And so he is allowed to give you, part, when part of you buy this, is several binaural CDs by David Chesky. Those are almost cheating. I don't even like to do it because it's not fair how much spatial cues you get, but that's fun to play with. And I like to even save that for when you buy it because the first day you set it up, he's going to be playing a lot of those with you. Part of the value of buying this is you're going to spend a lot of time with Edgar that first day, an hour setting up. And that's, <laughs> Dave can probably attest. That's oh, it's great. Most. In my membership group, you know, there's probably 50 or so people. 60 something people in the WhatsApp group, and most of them have the Bach, or at least some of them do, a uh, large percentage. And they all talk about dealing with Edgar as the most fun part of it. Um, you're dealing with a Princeton professor, rocket scientist. It's just a whole other level. That this hobby has smart people, but he's never had this level of Princeton resources, R&D. Most other companies would have thrown in the towel. He's been doing this since 2012. Yeah. You can find TED Talks on YouTube with Edgar back in 2012. If you want to feel under-accomplished in your life, <laughs> spend a few minutes with Edgar. Yeah. Look I'll at his bio. His short bio time. is unbelievable. We go to dinner with him. We don't even talk about audio. Like We're not talking about neurotic fuse directions and all this stuff. In fact, he's not a big believer in some of that stuff. It's fine if you do. He's not a hater on that stuff. But he believes in stuff he can prove with science. He's very involved with the AES Society. Of, um, so, you know, just be prepared for that. But you won't need to be worrying about fuses, um, tuning your system with cables and all this. Between this and ORC, Dave, you can probably tell, people all say they get less neurotic about that stuff once you implement this. That's you right. Like, well, you're, you're so far ahead of what everybody else What you're says. listening to here is like a light switch. You know, you're not in a synergistic research room where you want to know if the three dots on the wall, can you hear a difference? You know, that kind of thing. Or changing out a cable. You know how difficult that is to A and B something. This is not like that. This is the light switch is on and, and you have light or you're in darkness. It's, it's, it's that pronounced and it's that immediate. And for whatever reason, you may or may not like it. The, the advantage is one button push. You don't have to untook wires or take off doohickeys or change cable. You can just turn it off. And so even if it improves only 85% of your recordings to your tape, there are some people, and I understand it, what happened to me, you're so used to listening to crosstalk that you think that that's right. <laughs> and I was like that when I first heard it from Edgar. I was like, this can't be right. I was knee jerk like a lot of people. It's gimmick, it's fabricating it. But then I had him play uh, When Hell Freezes Over, Hotel California. And if you remember, the version everybody plays now is from the DVD, the video version. And when he played that, I realized I have the DVD. I remember that's a big stage. The people are all spread out. And when I was hearing it with the Bach, that was more correct. Now, even visually is not where the mic was, so you don't get the same visual, but it was much more realistic to what I remember in the DVD. And that's what told me to buy it. And I was a customer. I didn't wasn't a dealer until I was a customer. Um, and then everything from there transpired. 
but that is what did it for me. And that's what I like people to do. So any recording you want to request, we can play that as well. Will it work if you do have all the synergistic research stuff? Absolutely. <laughs> With or without, 100% the same. <laughs> Please place head in a listening position. Bach measurements done. Thank you. Okay, yeah, so just to show two things. He's a little bit different, same gear, same everything. He's got nine points in the left, very symmetrical left and right. Same guy, same, everything else the same, different. And then another thing you're gonna get very valuable, something called impulse response. Everybody's used to seeing frequency response, but what impulse response is, it plays the tone and then, how quickly does it go away <laughs> in terms of hearing? You want basically just to hear that tone and not a bunch of reflections. So it's very good to get broad here and then tailoring down to nothing. When you have some reflections, this room isn't perfect. This is gonna help you regardless you use the Bach or not. I would have bought this product because this tells you how to place room treatments better. When you have a reflection here and here, if you can see where it spikes up, at these different milliseconds, you can calculate, and Edgar will help you do this. He knows exactly how the sound travels. He'll say, oh, you've got something at 164 inches that's reflecting. So you've got to measure, well, what's 60, 164 inches? It could be the ceiling to you. It could be this to you that comes to 164 inches. But one of the techniques I developed is I either take a uh, pillow or if you have an umbrella, and you can do those same measurements and hold it over your head, and if it goes away, you know now where to put the, the room treatment, instead of just guessing and throwing everything everywhere. Or you can put it to your left or right or angled, and you will now be able to retake these measurements and you saw how quick it is, and you can get these improved. We just don't have the room treatments to do it here and improve it even more, and we're getting plenty good enough that you're hearing the results. But these are things that are gonna help you in your system on top of what you're hearing now. You don't need the room, you don't need to do that. You will be more strategic in what you do with your own treatments. And you'll be able to prove it, what goes in your ear. You can't argue that. You know, you're not estimating with Dirac or other things. Right. All right, so let's go ahead and play. The thing that amazed me was what you're hearing, it's always been there. It's nothing new, what you're hearing. You just haven't been able to hear it because all the misinformation coming at you from all the spatial, false spatial cues in the room. I'll go back to playing this one again for somebody that hadn't heard it. Um, we'll hear the, the, the flies again. Bought it. Pretty yeah. happy. <laughs> Some guy jumped out of my at my house. He jumped out of the chair. He thought it was a real fly. <laughs> Sounds like a brave man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> go from something like that that will put it in your ear, and now we'll go to something that the recording doesn't do that level of...
play the bass with these speakers in the full range and the job Mike and them did setting up this room again, not much treatment. You can play that same song in a lot of rooms here, it's gonna be a disaster. This is one you're gonna hear in the other rooms I heard it today. Hell yeah. psychoacoustic effect to keeping your eyes open if you close your eyes it's even more believable but I'm gonna do one that show EDM um, they, they a lot of these people will mix in um, spatial cues even with EDM and the first guy that came to my house ironically um, he actually was a DJ and he saw it on my channel and he had a recording on title and so he's like gotta you play my thing and he was blown away he's like stuff he never even heard before on his system uh, but here's, a, here's another Yossi Hawk for a
with the signal is only enhancing, in my opinion. Yeah. Uh, you be the judge, but awesome. you know, um, unfortunately, I only had an hour because I got dinner reservations, so I'm gonna turn it over to Mike to kind of keep going, calibrate as many of you want as long as you can stay. Uh, but do you, do you have any questions based on what you've been hearing? Yeah. What happens when the recording is out of phase? claims at this show that over 50% of the recording for the last 50 years are out of phase. Well, I mean, it's going to reveal the errors in the recording. And there are going to be some cases, he's talked about this, where the box, you may want to turn it off if they were very poor with their cardioid miking and they put two mics too close to an instrument. This is so precise, it will end up revealing poor miking in the recording. And so there will be the percentage chance, I, I keep it on all the time, but you may find a recording you wanna turn it off and you prefer crosstalk will actually be <laughs> at least more acceptable to what's already inferior. But if you deal with quality recordings and you get the binaurals from David Chesky, um, as a whole, you know, I was just playing random stuff on, I wasn't trying any gimmicky tracks. Like you can play these on all any All the dire straits are out of phase. Yeah, but people enjoy it and you're gonna get more spatial cues from it. Yep. It's not fixing what was done in the mastering, it's just revealing what's done in the mastering. Yep. Good or bad. Uh, any other questions? So we can get some more people rotated in and out yep. and uh, calibrated. Like I said, the uh, ORC, we can't demo this here <clears throat> because it's not released yet. Bach from Mac, I'm the only one that could sell Bach from Mac other than David Chesky, but uh, <laughs> You can talk to Mike Sweck. I mean, we're a family of dealers here. We want everybody to be happy. Uh, Mike's spending a lot of money on this room, so we're gonna make sure he gets compensated for that. If you want the, if you're in Florida and you want to buy the patio or Dio, if you're outside, you can still deal with me. Anybody that buys the lock, either from him or me, I'll add you to my user group so you can join. Tom's in the group, Dave's in the group, Edgar's in the group. You have access to a lot of experience, so. And it's a lot of fun finding tracks that we enjoy. So, anyway, just dumb question. But for Mac, if that's not referring to what, what is Mac? Macintosh. Okay, Mac. That's what I thought. Go ahead. Okay, so. Don't have yeah, roughly seven thousand dollars. You know, all in on that. Okay. Twenty thousand starts the Bach Do to thirty thousand. You get the billet aluminum chassis with the DAC is the killer addition because uh, it then it'll replace your DAC all the cords, all the power cords. Lots of people save money, put money back in their pocket. And you have, with these pieces, a tangible product that's worth something. Uh, that chassis alone <laughs> costs several thousand dollars to, to CNC. If you go up close to it, you'll see no seams. It is just one yeah. billet aluminum chassis. Now what did MSB have to do with that? They did the, the chassis CNC work, maker, right? There's, they, Edgar contracted them because they have a CNC machine that can do that chassis the way he wants. If you go up to it, it's not just a, um, it's got some really interesting curves and stuff. Yeah. What about the power supplies? Was, didn't That's linear power MSB supplies. have something to do with those as no, well? Not the power supplies. No, yeah. okay. Linear power supplies in the audio and DO for those that clip the higher end. Female. Okay. And what you clip it. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Switch me. Yes. <laughs> All right. Gotcha. It's, it's uh, hot as can be in here, so I'm going to fall off if I 